the anointing of your spirit to receive your word. Open our hearts to receive your word. Open our minds to understand your word, to hear what you are saying to us. Holy Spirit of the living God, we pray that you would just bless us in this part of the service right now. We pray, Lord, that you would have your way with us, that you would bless us, that you would heal us, that you would strengthen us. And I pray for the anointing of your Holy Spirit to be able to preach your word, Father. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I want to, I want to talk about the, the bent over woman that we hear about in Luke chapter 13, verses 10 to 17. And Jesus heals this woman. They are, this is just an amazing miracle. And if you look at the gospel readings, there's something like 25, if I, if, if I uh, you know, counted correctly, there's 25 different healing stories in the gospels. And um, there are many types of ways that Jesus healed people. Um, physical healing, mental healing, uh, spiritual defects and so on. Uh, but Jesus healed people, he touched them, he made them whole. And it's almost as if the gospel writers want to take us by the hand and say to you and me, come along, come with us, and we want to show you what Jesus did. Look over there, that man, he was blind, and Jesus gave, back, gave him back his sight. And yet he's a little boy who had a terrible fever. And his father thought he was going to die, but Jesus healed him. And there goes that fellow whose mind was so darkened that he used to run around unclothed and he was cutting himself with stones. And look at him, he's been cured, he's been made whole, he's been given back his life. Isn't Jesus just amazing? Isn't he just wonderful? That's what the Gospels is trying to show us. Stories of Jesus healing, healing people, wonderful stories, each one so similar and each one also so unique, one of a kind. And this morning I want us to look at this story where Jesus healed this woman who was bent over. And this story begins on the, on the Sabbath. It's a Sabbath day and Jesus is teaching in the synagogue, which means there were a lot of people there. And uh, he would have been sitting, talking to them and teaching them that they would be listening to what he had to say. But while he is teaching them, he sees someone. He sees someone. Now you may say, of course, he was looking at the listeners. Obviously he must have seen them. Now I don't want to, I don't mean that he sees them in the sense of just seeing the person in front of him. I mean that he notices the person. He sees something deep. He sees deep into the heart of this woman. He notices her. He, he, notice, he notices her and he sees her. He sees right into her heart. What does it mean to be noticed? What does it mean to be paid attention to? Really be noticed. Sometimes it's good to be noticed, isn't it? I remember when I was, when you were young at school and you were in a classroom and you thought you knew the answer and you put up your hands with all the other kids and you hoped that the teacher would notice you and ask you because you really believed you had the answer. I know the answer. Please call on me. I want to be noticed. Or maybe you had a rugby match or a soccer match and and you see the TV cameras there, and you look at the big screen, and you wave your hands like crazy, hopefully, hoping you're going to see yourself on that big screen. Out of all the thousands of people, you want to be noticed. Maybe it's just human instinct to want to be noticed. Don't look over there. Bring the camera to me. I want you to see me on the big screen. Pay attention to me. Maybe it's a bit of a throwback to when we were small, when we were learning to do things, you know, when you kick a soccer ball or when you sit on a swing as a child and you call out, look mommy, look daddy, look at me, look what I can do, notice me. It seems to be born in us. This need to have someone 
whose attention we crave to notice us, to see us, to affirm us, to recognize us, that we are important, we are special, we are unique. But then there are other times when you don't want to be noticed. Definitely not in church when you expect the minister to call you up to give some testimony or something. Or I'll give you another example. When you drive into the mall and your mind is preoccupied by something or other and you pull out in front of another car and you make the driver hit his brakes and, it's, and you, you walk, it's almost as if you, you're too scared to look in the rear view mirror. You hope he's not going to pass you because you expect to see a sign that you really don't want to see. You don't want to be noticed. You know you're messed up, but you don't want to be noticed. You wish you could just disappear. So sometimes being noticed is the last thing that you want. But in the story, Jesus notices this woman. She's bent over. And we are told that she's been suffering from this infirmity for 18 years. An evil spirit was responsible, one translation says. Another translation uses the word, a spirit of weakness. And she was bent over. Can you imagine what it would have been like to be unable to straighten up for 18 years? Can you imagine that? I was going to do a bit of an inner stuff. Uh, maybe I should. Should I want you to come up here? Just come up. Come on. You and me. You and me here for a moment. Come, come stand in the front. I'm going to pick up my wife because she's easier by the figure. Now, I want you to stand there. Just bend over to the ground. Bend forward. All the way. All the way. More. Imagine me. Now, if we notice how we laugh, and it's funny, isn't it? It's funny to see. Stay there. <laughs> and to see her bent over like this. Now, when she talks, how are you going to talk to them? You're going to turn your head to the side. Well, face them. Show them your face. And when you talk to them, you're going to look down at her. Now, it's funny. But I bet you within 30 minutes, it's not going to be funny for her anymore. You understand what I mean? And after, hey, imagine eight. Thanks, my book. You're such an age. After, <laughs> after eight, imagine after 18 years walking around bent like that. I want you to give you that illustration because we can't just think about it. But imagine being bent over like that for 18 years. Jesus sees the bent over woman. And then he does something most of us would not do. We would normally try to look away from that. We, we don't want to look at that person. But Jesus doesn't. He focuses on her. His attention is on her. But when we see someone who is handicapped, we sometimes we look away because we want to be, we don't want to be impolite, we don't want to stare, we look away. Of course it is, it can, I suppose, be rude to stare at someone when they have a handicap. We teach our children not to do it. But this quickly looking away that we do is in some ways terribly hurtful for the person with his handicapped because it makes them feel that there's something wrong with them make them feel unworthy not worthy of attention, not valuable almost invisible we don't intend that of course but the result is the same we, whether we intend to do that or not that's how we make the people feel now I was thinking about this and I remember years ago talking about at least yeah, 40 years ago, I would say, 35, 40 years ago. Um, there was a place in Santa called Cheshire Homes. I'm not even sure if it's still there, Cheshire Homes. A lot of handicapped people there. We used to go minister there. There were a lot of strong Christians there. And uh, I remember when I went there as a young Christian for the first time, I really struggled because I didn't know how to look at them. I, I, was, I was almost like I was embarrassed for some reason. You almost feel uncomfortable, and you'll notice, you notice how weird it is that when you see someone who's handicapped, not just in a wheelchair, but if they, if they slightly, you know, spastic or whatever, they're shaking or whatever, they do it, and so it's abnormal, and you don't know how to deal with it, and it's amazing how we're inclined to shout at people, as if they're deaf, they're handicapped, but they're not deaf, so the instinct is to shout, 
And there was one guy there, and for the life of me, I've been trying to think of his name, and I just can't remember his name. Such a long time ago. But this man loved the Lord. He, you know, his body would jerk. He never had arms. But he, his, his arms were, you know, deformed. But he would praise the Lord, but he would make you feel so comfortable. He would tell you, you don't have to be uncomfortable. Treat me like anybody else. He would say, treat me like anybody else. And the thing that struck me about this man, and I'll never forget it, and I was just annoyed that I can't think of his name. When we used to sing praise songs, and everybody raised their hands to praise the Lord, he would lean back in his wheelchair and lift his legs up to praise the Lord. He lifted his legs up to praise the Lord. That's all he had. And I know God honored that. We too shy because we're worried about people around us. God raised my hands in public. Here's this handicapped man who's got no arms, but all he's got is legs, and he raises his legs to the Lord to praise him. And those people showed me how to praise God, even though they were handicapped. Jesus is teaching. And right in the middle of his teaching, when he sees this bent over woman, he interrupts his lesson and he calls her over to him. That's what the text says, which means he not only sees her, he focuses his, intent, his attention on her right there in front of everyone. He makes her the center of, her, of attention. Now, I don't know how she felt. But I wonder if she was a little bit nervous to be noticed like that, especially by this rabbi, when everybody else just passes me by. Maybe she didn't want to be noticed. She was used to being invisible. She was a woman with no name. And when the people in her town saw her coming down the street, all bent over, neck cramped upwards trying to see where she was going. They didn't say, here comes Martha or Elizabeth. They said, here comes that, pure, that poor woman who is bent over. She didn't even have a name. Not by a vocation or a family, but by the, as the bent over woman. The crippled woman, the handicapped woman, the one who looks different from other people, the one whose identity is so wrapped up in a condition that she has no other name except bent over woman. That's how you and I identify some people. We call them the retarded, we call them the disfigured, we call them the drunk, we call them the ex convict. We give them a name, which is not really a name, but a label. And to get more, a bit more personal, I want to ask you this morning, what is your name? What label do people stick on you? How do people identify you? Single? Divorced? Step-parent? Parent, widow? Retired? Old person? And what is it that is bending you over? Why are you bent over? Is it your job, your worries about your health, your finances, trying to keep your marriage together, trying to cope with loneliness, trying to be a parent and still maintain your sanity? There are so many ways that life has of bending us down and breaking us down. As I talk to you, I talk to people who are watching this video, or who will be watching this video. Jesus sees this bent over woman. He calls her to him and he says to her, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. He places his hands on her and she stands up straight and begins praising God. Can you imagine that after 18 years? But then something happens that blows my mind. When the synagogue ruler sees this, he gets all bent out of shape. How uh, inappropriate is it that this hearing should take place on the Sabbath? For heaven's sake. That's what you call being religious. But the Lord Jesus won't stand for his nonsense. He has no patience with those who are more concerned about legal niceties than 
They are by the relieving human suffering. In Luke chapter 13, verse 15 to 16, look how Jesus answers the synagogue ruler. He says, you hypocrites, does each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the store and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? And he puts them to shame. Did you hear something in, that, in those verses? Did you hear something? Jesus didn't call a bed of a woman. He called a daughter of Abraham. She's the only person in the Bible, in fact, who is called by that name, daughter of Abraham, even though we all by faith are daughters and sons of Abraham. But she's the only one that is called daughter of Abraham. Abraham was the great father of faith. He was the one who many years before received God's promise that a great nation would be created out of his descendants, a people through whom all nations of the earth would be blessed. This woman, Jesus says, is a daughter of Abraham. She isn't a crippled woman anymore. She isn't a nobody. She is a daughter of Abraham. She shall not be pushed aside. She shall not be given a label to keep her in a place. No, she's a beloved child of God. She's part of God's plan, part of God's salvation, and she's a blessing for the whole world. Isn't our Lord Jesus just amazing? Isn't he wonderful? You see, love just pours out of him, almost as if he can't help it. He can't help noticing the invisible ones. He can't help loving them. He can't help healing them. In the case of the bent over woman, Jesus reaches out to heal without even being asked. He wasn't asked to heal her. He sees her. Sees not just the obvious things, that she cannot stand up. She cannot stand upright. He sees whatever spirit has been keeping her life bent. He sees the totality of her suffering, the humiliation of her ailment. The way they set her apart into a prison of loneliness. He sees other people. People look away when she comes into their when she comes into the light of their vision. He sees the emotion, the emotional as well as the physical pain that she suffers. He sees the whole picture. He sees that she is too timid or too afraid or too hopeless to ask for healing. Why would this rabbi even bother with me? And I want to tell you this morning, my sisters and brothers, I've got good news for you. Jesus sees the same things about each and every one of us. He sees deep into our need. He sees deep into our heart. He sees what sometimes we cannot even see ourselves about what's going on. That our anger at other people is so often really anger at ourselves. That we're often afraid to look inside ourselves because we know there's a lot of rubbish there that we'd rather not deal with. He sees that the good front that we sometimes put on when we are in public, even here in church, is often a cover-up for the hurts we have suffered over the years. People keep it inside of them. The rejections, the disappointments, the betrayals, the failures, the losses, the, losses, the fears. He sees the ugly stuff inside of us. Ugly things others have done to us. Other, ugly things we have done to ourselves. Ugly things that we have done to others. Ugly things that were nobody's fault but just happened. He sees it all. He notices you and me. Just as he did to that bent over woman. He calls us over to him. <laughs> And he says to you, come, come to me. I see how bent you are, come to me. Let me put my hands on you. Let me heal you. Let me take all that is bent and crooked in your life and make it straight and strong. Let me wipe away all the ugliness inside of you. You too are a child. Abraham. You are God's child. 
You are loved without limit, without reservation, without condition. And I hear the voice of Jesus saying to each and every one of us this morning, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. So let us turn to me and pray. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you heal, that you may hope. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you love us. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We wish it. Praise you. I feel in my spirit this morning that God is speaking to people and you feel bent in your spirit, in your life, even though it's not visible for the world to see, that you feel the pressures of life bending you over and you need to be healed. Jesus notices you and calls you out. And so I'm going to do what I don't do too often, but I feel in my spirit I want to give you an opportunity, like that bent over woman, that daughter of Abraham, to come to Jesus now. And let me pray with you. So I'm going to ask you to just come in the front here. And I don't want you to worry about the person next to you. Be like our friend from Cheshire Home who raised his feet to praise the Lord, not worrying about people next to him. If you feel that you need relief from your struggles, from your difficulties, from what's happening in your life, won't you come to Jesus now? I feel there's an anointing of God's Spirit and He wants to bless you. So can I ask you just to come to the front here? We can stand next to each other. There's enough space here. And then we'll pray together and ask the Lord to touch you. Please feel free to do that now. Don't worry about the person next to you. If you need prayer, whatever's going on that you're concerned about, could even be somebody else you're worried about, just come and just lift them to the Lord now. Just come and stand right in your front here. You can stand behind each other and make it. There's a more than enough space. There we go. Just come, come, come forward. Everybody just come forward. Thank you, Jesus. Can anybody, can other, anybody else want to come up? Please do that before we pray. Like I said, let's take this opportunity to allow the Lord to bless you. Anybody else want to come up before we pray? Okay. Um, all right, I want to ask Wesley. She can't come up, but she wants to come. Can you just lay your hand on her there while we pray? Wesley's going to come to you. Yeah, Wesley's going to come to you. So... Unless you want to come up, you want to come up, my darling, then you can. We'll wait for you. If you want to come up, you can. There we go. There we go. Daddy, you can just come up with her, just stay with her. There we go. Anybody else want to come up before we pray? <coughs> I don't want anybody to go home and say, I felt I should have come up. I felt I needed to come up and I didn't come up. Mm. So rather just come up if you feel. Okay, thank you. Wesley, can I ask you to come up and just stand behind folk and just put your hand across there? And uh, Morgan, you can come up too, stand behind them. Just put your hands up, help me pray, pray together. <coughs> Pray for all these folk as they come up to the Lord. I want you guys, as you stand, if you can, obviously, Gene, um, you can't do that, you're holding your But just hold your hands open to the Lord. How we say, hold your hands open and receive from the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm ready to receive from you. I hold my hands open to receive from you. I ask you to bless me. Father, as all these folks stand before you, put their hands out wide. Like this lady who had this infirmity that you, you blessed, this Lord of Abraham, you knew that you made a whole. Father, I pray now for each and every person standing here. Lord, you know the, the difficulties that they may be going through and the things that they are struggling with. That You know why they come up. You see into their hearts. You see into their life. And so, Lord, I pray now that you would touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Holy Spirit, as you lay your hand on that bent woman, you made her come up straight. You healed her. 
He took away that infirmity. And so I pray right now that you would lay your hands on these folks who stand before you. Father, I pray right now that you would touch them, that you would heal them, that they would feel your peace right now. They would feel the anointing of your spirit upon them. That they would feel your closeness, Lord. Father, deliver them. Set them free. Heal them. Give them strength. Give them hope. Give them peace. Bless them right now. Bless their homes. Bless their families, Lord. Touch them right now. Yes. 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 Yes.